everybody, and welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is The Daily Show, where we bring you the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us this morning is your Collider Movie Talk crew. First up, senior producer John Campia. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie-related show on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California, and we are so glad you decided to make us part of your day. Also here is writer-director John Schnepp. Hey, what's up, everybody? So happy to be here. Can't wait to find out what this Planet of the Apes movie is called. <laughs> <laughs> and also here, it's Christian Harloff. Hello. <laughs> hey, and listen, guys, before we get started, just a couple things I want to remind you of. New York Comic Con is coming up. If you want to go, we've got a great idea for you. Head on over to Collider.com. Actually, you can look in the description of this video, and you'll find a link to this contest that Collider is doing. You will get... Airfare, hotel, passes to New York Comic Con, spending money, the whole thing. It's an incredible giveaway. Once again, check in the description of this video for the link and how you can enter that contest and all the prize details. Check that out. And also very excited. It's a big day around here in the Collider Video Studios. Tonight, we are kicking off our re television recap network with our preseason Empire special tonight. Make sure you come on back to the channel later tonight. If you're a fan of Empire, make sure you come back here. Check out our preseason special going into episode one next week. Really excited about it. Hope you can join us. All right. What's going on in the movie news today? The next installment in the Apes series, which may or may not be called War for the Planet of the Apes, is set to hit theaters on July 14th, 2017. And it looks like we may have our villain for the film. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Hunger Games and True Detective star Woody Harrelson has has been cast to play the new antagonist called The Colonel. Harrelson joins Andy Serkis, who returns as the ape Caesar for the third time, with Dawn of, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes director Matt Reeves returning to helm as well. Christian, is Woody Harrelson a good addition to War for the Planet of the Apes? Yes, absolutely he is. Even in that movie um, that just came out recently, he's played a villain a couple times, but Out of the Furnace is a movie that just came out. I thought he was really good in that. Um, he was a villain in Seven Psychopaths. He's been a villain before, M Mickey Mallory. You know, he, mm. he he's he's done it, and he's good at it. He's a great actor. He brings depth to it. What I hope, though, is I ho I hope they go more towards the Dawn of the Planet of the Apes focus with the villains than they do than more so in the Rise. And what I mean by that is in Rise, it was kind of like the cartoony. Um, you know the bad guy who was just like, ah, you apes, we're gonna we're gonna take the it's yeah. the money, it's all that. And then the second one, it is more. It was Gary Oldman wasn't. You can't argue he wasn't even really a villain. Right. He just he had his vision of what he wanted to do, he was trying to protect his people. Koba even even Koba wasn't necessarily a villain. He was just he's got a lot of demons to him. And then once right. the humans come Which in, that great. he snaps, and then he just goes and does terrible things. So I hope that that's kind of where the colonel is because they set up the colonel is coming at the end of the end of the last one and, and it's going to go down. So Woody Harrelson is a tremendous actor and he was great in True Detective, so it's a positive thing. There is still a perception out there of Woody Harrelson after all these years that he's still Woody from Cheers. He's still just the white man can't jump. Oh, I'm right. Woody. I'm I love my marijuana. I'm Woody. You know, you know there's this perception of him. He is a tremendous actor. Yeah. <clears throat> he is a tremendous <clears throat> talent. And how many times do people have to just be surprised by how good he was in X before we realize this dude is world class. He's a tremendous talent. Uh, as Sinead kind of alluded to, there is still a little bit of a question floating around what the name of this movie is. Um, for instance, the IMDb says what I just assumed the name of the movie was, just is War of the Planet of the Apes. But a lot of the big trades, Hollywood Reporter, Variety, are listing the movie as War for the Planet of the Apes. Now, I reached out to some people this morning. What I heard was that the studio has not finalized the name of the film. So I don't know if that's true. I'm just telling you what I heard this morning. If any of you guys have any more definitive information, but I mean, so like I said, though, everywhere I look, it's like either War 4 or War of. Nobody seems to have uh, a standard thing. But as far as the movie itself goes, adding Woody Harrelson is going to be great. I love the fact that he's going to be a military guy. I love the fact that we're picking up where the last one left off. Mm -hmm. Sounds great to me. I'm excited. Yeah, Woody Harrelson is a is is one of the greatest actors around right now. He fits. He's a great character actor too. He can fit into any role. He could be the best man's friend. He could be the lead role. Right. I mean, if you saw True Detective, you could just see the nuances that he's able to bring. He was even great as like the gay best friend in that Justin Timberlake, Mina Kunis, no strings right. attached. Oh, friends right. With right, right, yeah, right, friends right, with benefits. Right, thank right, you. The right. other one. Yeah, and, and, and the he's Hamish in Hunger Games too. Yeah, and he's fab fab yeah. fabulous. And he's, games. and he's also hilarious when he wants to be. Like obviously, he started out in a TV series for many years as like you know 
the funny guy, yeah. like the you know the 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 punchline of many people's jokes, right. playing someone really stupid. You know that's that's really hard when it's actually you're really smart. He's a very smart guy. He's very politically active. So for him to be in this to play. I guess the bad guy. We don't even know what his intentions are. Maybe he's the last guy left who's trying to fight the entire planet of apes. He's the last bastion of humanity. I mean, so I, I'm 100% into them casting him. It's great. All right, what's next? As some of you may know, actor Channing Tatum is developing a feature film biopic of Evil Knievel, the motorcycle stuntman who dazzled the world for years with his death-defying stunts and ended his career with a world record 433 broken bones. According to reports, director Darren Aronofsky is currently in talks to direct the film. Tatum and Aronofsky have reportedly been looking for a project to work on together, and Tatum even offered him the director's chair for his upcoming Gambit movie. But Aronofsky turned the project down. Schnepp, what would you think of an of an evil Knievel movie directed by Darren Aronofsky? So exciting. The, the best news of the entire show, as far as I'm concerned. I loved Evil Knievel as a kid. <clears throat> Incredible stuntman, risking his life, like the Grand Canyon, if you don't remember that. Like this insane idea of him getting into a giant rocket <laughs> just launching and like failing horribly and smashing all the bones in his bodies and he's, he's he was the original crazy man stunt man who put his you know i had a poster of evil knievel i had the little rev up action bike of evil knievel <clears throat> he's a crazy guy and having someone as talented as aronofsky directing it i mean if if channing tatum is going to play evil knievel and he's got aronofsky to direct him this could be one of the most amazing uh, biopics ever Christian, I love the idea of Aronofsky doing an Evil Knievel movie. I mean, just the fact, I, I'm also a big fan of Evil Knievel. And what a smart name, Evil Knievel. I mean, it just <laughs> worked so great. Um, but the thing that I get nervous of is let's sign the contract. Because Aronofsky has been attached to a lot of things in the past. And remember, he was the guy who was supposed to direct The Fighter a long time yep, ago. Yep, and then yeah. walked. He was and supposed to direct Wolverine. He was supposed to direct tons of stuff yep. before he's walked many times. So until they start shooting, I'm not going to get super excited. The possibility of it is great. And I and this, is, this also goes back into the conversation we've had about Channing Tatum many times. He just keeps upping his game. And a way to up your game is by playing with the best. He's playing. He, he changes up every director, every actor, people he's working with. He wants to work with everyone so he learns as an actor. He's young. He's, what's he, 30, 30? 32 years old or whatever he is, and he's still, he's he's learning. So this would be great. And I'm like that he's the one that's going after Aronofsky. I hope that it happens because it's a good fit. Yeah, uh, first of all, I, I'm i fascinated by the notion of Darren Aronofsky directing the Gambit film. Yeah. I mean, but I remember going back when it was first announced that he was attached to direct that, not the X-Men Origins Wolverine film, but the, the Wolverine movie. Mm -hmm. the, the, when he was attached, we all lost our minds. It's like, are you kidding me? Darren Aronofsky is going to do that? That's insane. Then he walked. He's going to fight her. He walked. He, there were about four or five projects that he's attached himself to, was a part of the developmental stage, and then left. Batman Year One. Right. Like the oh, yeah, one. that right. was that, one of the ones, yeah. too, wasn't it? He wrote it with Miller. Right. So, I mean, it's... You're right. It's difficult to get too excited about this until he the the paper is not even not until even they start shooting until the day yeah. they start shooting. It's hard to get too excited about, but in theory, my goodness, Darren Aronofsky directing an Evil Can Evil biopic? Yeah, sign me up. Chain Chain Tatum's thirty five. Thirty five, but still, even then, still young. Yeah, it's still a young dude getting better and better and better as he goes. But uh, this would be fantastic if this can actually come about. This would be fantastic. All right, so folks, we've reached that part of the show now for buy or sell. Here's how this works. In front of her, sinead has got a few other items in the world of movie news. She's going to run them down. And those of us at the table are simply going to say whether we buy it or sell. So, Sinead, what do we got? The first trailer for the upcoming The Divergent series, Allegiant, has hit the web. After the Earth's shattering revelations of Insurgent, Triss, played by Woodley, must escape with four beyond the wall that encircles Chicago to finally discover the shocking truth of what lies behind it. John, do you buy or sell this first trailer for the Divergent series, Allegiant? Well, this is obviously them creating a shared cinematic universe between them and uh, Maze Runner, The Scorch Trials, because they're clearly on that wall. Yeah. Looking at yeah. it, it's the scorch. Little finger's going to come up any second now. Um, look, whether or not you think the movie's going to be good or bad, when a new trailer comes out, you, you try to give your honest answer. There's a lot of movies coming out that I think are going to be awesome, but the trailers come out and say, hey, I think the trailer's bad, but the movie's going to be awesome. Uh, but no, this is a bad trailer. It's a bad trailer. Half of the trailer is just a reflection on things that happened in the movies before. Guess what, folks? The people who are interested in this movie have already seen those movies. You don't have to remind them. A little shot here and there of something from a previous movie is fine, but they literally take like half the trailer doing that. 
Um, they break into some action sequences. None of it did anything for me. I, it's, so forget the fact that you may love or may not like the uh, you know th- this series of films right now. I, it just I watched a trailer. Did nothing to make me go. Hmm, maybe I should check this out. Didn't do it for me, Christian. What about you? I sell it. I have no idea what the hell is going on in this movie. I I, I look at it and it's like all these movies seem to kind of blend together now. And you mentioned Maze Runner. It, it they all seem to be the same thing minus. The Hunger Games um, and and Harry Potter and movies like that to actually they told stories that were so different and unique and the characters were are, are developed. I watch this. I don't know. I really. I'm not even joking. I don't even remember. I just watched the trailer 20 minutes ago. I don't know what it's about. Like you said, they they because I heard Sinead say they're going to Chicago and they're going to find out what's happening. Okay. Um, I, I, when I look at her, I'm glad her, that her hair's coming back. Um, <laughs> does that count? Um, and then I and I think that you know Theo. James is he was right. He's fine. He's good. He plays when he plays serious and he's doing a lot of that. And then he just it looks like he's shooting a water gun when he's shooting that one gun. He's like, mm. right. I don't know what he's doing, but it, I don't care about this movie. Yeah, I'm gonna sell it to a bunch of frisbees. The yeah. last shot, I just remember a bunch of frisbees hanging over him. You're right, they spent over two thirds of that trailer. I, I was like, Am I watching the right trailer halfway through the trailer? Because all they were showing I've was seen all this before. Yeah, yeah he had like, to tell me, he had to tell me, No, 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 they're, no, they're showing yeah, the same the thing. The new footage will come. They're, you're just watching detergent right now. It's like, <laughs> All right, after they're done with detergent, now we're in the rinse cycle. When does it end? Yeah, I'm not. When's interested. wipe happen? Yeah, I, I, I saw the detergent movie and I passed out. I think three times. You know, I had the next nap. I was like, oh, it's still on. You know, sweating. It's one of those like movies that it just doesn't end, and it's for the first thirty minutes. So not for me. So, all right, what's next? It looks like Charlie's Angels are heading to the big screen once again. No, not with Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu again, but rather a reboot. According to a report in The Wrap, Sony Pictures is developing a new Charlie's Angels, and it's targeting Elizabeth Banks to direct the project. Banks recently made her directorial debut with Pitch Perfect 2, which made over $285 million worldwide, more than doubling the box office of the first film. Christian, do you buy or sell a Charlie's Angels reboot with Elizabeth Banks directing. I am absolutely not the uh, target demographic here for this movie. Um, but uh, on a business side, it's a buy. It makes sense. I didn't even like Pitch Perfect 2, to be honest. I th- and, that, and I didn't like it because I didn't like Elizabeth Banks' directing style. But I, I'm not one of those people who went out to buy the tickets. And it made a lot of money. And it was very successful. So it would make sense to go after her. And this is a property that she probably could have a lot of fun with as a director. She probably can get some. It's one of the benefits for her being such a big star. She can get some probably some quality talent as well to play the angels, to you know, to play Charlie. It makes sense. Um, I'm still skeptical with Sony because of the problems that they have. I know they're kind of rebuilding now. But I think overall as a business decision, um, yeah, because I didn't like number two. I, I, the, the the second movie with McG and everything. You could. I don't want them to be too similar in tone to the McG right, films. Right. They've got to be different in tone because then why even do a remake? Um, but the property in general could be told again, so it's a buy. I'm gonna very mildly sell this. I've, in case you don't know, I am just a little bit in love with Elizabeth Banks. This woman is the whole package. She's charming, intelligent. Um, she's she's sharp, she's witty, she's uber talented. I'm a big fan of hers. But yeah, I went into Pitch Perfect 2. And Pitch Perfect, the first one, was one of those movies that I was expecting to be garbage. And I was like, wow, this is actually kind of entertaining. This was a fun movie. The second one, I didn't mind the second one, but I thought it was a big step down. And like you were saying, to, to echo what you were saying there, I think the reason that I thought it was a step down was you could totally tell this was a first-time director. I thought there were a lot of mistakes and that all can be attributed to the direction throughout the film. And so so it's not like Ben Affleck's Gone Baby Gone as a first directorial thing where you're like, what the hell? How did he do this? It was, uh, mm, yeah, this was kind of rough. But it was her first outing. Um, obviously, there are some studios who saw, saw potential there. Obviously, the box office is great, but I think that had more to do with the first per- Pitch Perfect than it did to do than it does have to do with the second Pitch Perfect. Um, I'm curious. Uh, I'm curious about the film because if you're going to do Charlie's Angels, you also got to have a high action element as well. Mm-hmm. So I am curious about the film, but until I start seeing some stuff, I am just ever so mildly going to give it a sell. Schnapp. I'm going to buy it. I didn't see Pitch Perfect 2, so I don't know anything about her directorial style, but reading so many reviews 
I mean, her interviews with her and seeing interviews with her, I think she's got the right mindset to do a Charlie's Angel. Mm. So with, you know, with the box office there, with her proving herself and you guys saying it's not exactly the greatest de directorial debut, but this is a property that I think is uh, something she could wrap her head around pretty easily. And uh, I don't think she's going to follow in the steps of McGee and make it like that super, super action, corny kind of comedy action. I'm sure there'll be comedy action in it, but it'll be a little different. So I'll buy it for right now. You know what would be great? What would be a coup d'etat? If she could get Bill, Bill Murray, Murray to come back yeah. as, as Bosley. Don't, it's a reboot, total reboot, <laughs> but still have Bill Murray as Bosley. Wow. That, that would make it something to buzz about. All right, what's awesome. next? We're now just two months away from the release of the final film in the Hunger Games series when The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2 hits theaters. Today, a new trailer for the film hit the web. Realizing the stakes are no longer just for survival, Katniss Everdeen teams up with her closest friends, including Pita, Gale, and Finnick, for the ultimate mission. Together, they leave District 13 to liberate the citizens of war-torn Panem and assassinate President Snow, who's obsessed with destroying Katniss. What lies ahead are moral traps, dangerous enemies and moral choices that will ultimately determine the future of millions. Schnepp, do you buy or sell this trailer for The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2? I buy this trailer a whole 100%. I loved it. I thought it was uh, it was epic. It was uh, emotional. Uh, they showed a lot of clips, new clips, old clips, mixed together clips that really just built the entire series all the way up to what we're going to see, which is this very last episode. So to me, it's a 100% buy. I really liked it. I have surprisingly really enjoyed The Hunger Games. Even, I know a lot of people were a little poo-poo-y on the last one. I even really enjoyed the last one. I sell this trailer uh, for part of the reasons that I sold the first one. Half the trailer is shots from other movies. Um, and unless you have absolutely no cognitive skills whatsoever, this trailer kind of puts a massive spoiler on a big silver platter for you going into the into the final film as well. Um, I like the last trailer better, to be honest. And it's like this almost felt like it was the very first teaser for this movie doing the flashbacks mm -hmm. and whatnot. But this is like the third promotional video that's come out for third or fourth promotional video. Right. If you count if you count the military propaganda one too. It's like, I expected more from this. Dying for the movie. Can't wait for the movie. It's going to be great. I think they're going to finish off really strong. But I thought this trailer was a misstep. For So for me, it's a sell. See, I buy the trailer because of those reasons. Too many... We know that this movie is going to do well. We know that the fans of the, of the other three movies are going to go see the movie. I don't need them to give me a big, full trailer that has that, giving away so many story points. Like, I mean, I didn't get a chance to talk about it yesterday, but Creed, I can't wait to see Creed. I thought they gave away too much in that trailer. I thought they gave, they've given away too much in so many of these trailers here that this little promotional thing, and I think the difference between this trailer and the Divergent. Insurgent Divergent Wipe trailer is that if if you have uh, the beginning, it was almost just like, previously on Divergent. <laughs> that didn't seem like that for right. me. That to me, this, this one seemed like it was part of the promotional video yeah. of what it was leading up to emotionally. It had a point. I understood that it all is about Katniss and her family and, and accepting the role of who she is. There was a point to the narrative in this one as opposed to that other thing that we saw. Um, so I did like it, although the first like 15 seconds, uh, I turned to Sinead and I said, this, sound, this looks like a, a David Bowie video. Like she's standing on the <laughs> sure. side and like the music. But, but you know what? It's funny you say that because I mean, the reason I sold the first trailer and the reason I bought this trailer, you're right, they're almost very identical. They're showing clips from the other episodes of their the previous yeah. movies and they're intercutting them, but I felt like the Hunger Games one did it great. Yeah, they did well, it cinematically because it played into the narrative. Yeah, yeah, and it played into what the story that they were t that they're they, telling you. They also made it epic. They by doing those yes. like cross dissolves, having it was just cinematic. Well, and, and I can tell you clip clip we, reel, right? Because I can tell you why and what the reason was behind that. As where I still can't tell you what the reason was, but right. besides saying this is what happened in the other movies. See, I agree with what a lot of you guys are saying, but d but just for me personally, it comes mm -hmm. down to I thought these are two bad trailers. This one is just a better put together bad trailer. <laughs> that, that, that's, <laughs> yeah, all right. But but so I I kind of agree. All right, folks, <laughs> we've reached that part of the show now. It is Wednesday, which means it is time for. Or rewind where we I kind of affectionately call this the feeling old segment we look back and we see what films opened 10 years ago this week and what films opened 20 years ago this week so let's start feeling old together first of all celebrating its 10 year anniversary we've got the films Lord of War Just Like Heaven and the horror film Cry Wolf and the films turning 20 years old really feeling old this week is 
Hackers, the Angelina Jolie film Hackers is 20 years old. Clockers and Angus. So Schnepp, let's talk let's talk to you. The films that turn 10, the films that turn 20, which are the ones that stand out to you? I remember not liking Hackers when I first saw it. And now there's like this big Hackers renaissance. Like, man, let's watch Hackers. It's just because I think it's 20 years old and it's got Angelina Jolie and a bunch of other actors that have become Matthew famous. Matthew Gilliard's in that movie, yeah, so too. <laughs> I kind of half want to see it again. Like, that's it. But then the other part of me, of me remembers not liking it. So yeah. I'm like, so I'm kind of on the fence about that. But I recently saw Lord of War um, for the first time this year because everyone had always been telling me it's a great movie and this and that. And honestly, Aside from the opening sequence with the bullet, that whole opening sequence, right. which I thought was fantastic, eh, yeah. eh, it was like they just felt kind of forced and played out, and I didn't like the na- the voiceover narration. There was a lot of things that I think it was because it was hyped so much. Like this is an incredible Cage film. I was like, all right, bring it. And then I didn't bring it for me. So those are the movies that stand out to me. Yeah, the one that really stands out to me, Hack. I mean, Hacker stands out. Obviously, that was kind of a, a pivotal kind of movie in a lot of different ways for a lot of different people. But for me, it is Lord of War. I don't know that we've ever talked about Lord no. of War, but I, I'm one of those guys. I loved Lord of War. And it was right about that time that people started wondering, does Nick Cage still have it? I, we right. don't know if he still has it. And then I saw Lord of War. I'm like, Nick Cage still has it. And a lot of people forget Jared Leto was in that movie too, right before he kind of started taking his absence Definitely. from Hollywood. I thought that was a movie with a great narrative, thought the performances were great. Um, Warlord, you mean Warlord? No, Lord of War. Um, I, I just thought it was a terrifically put together story, wonderfully acted, beautifully directed. I was really impressed with the movie myself. So out of all these films, that's the one that stands out to me. What about you, Christian? Um, I have to see Lord of War. It's the same thing with Schnapp. I've been hearing so long how many people really enjoy the movie and think it's underrated, so I want to check it out. Um, I wonder what side of the fence I'll be on when I see it. For me, uh, Hackers is the one I remember seeing because I... I was obsessed with Angelina Jolie. I mean, it's still it's, for a long time she was the sexiest Can you woman on the that planet. Movie's 20, twenty years, years old, and, old. And she, but she had that thing to where you know, twenty years ago, she just, she's just electric on screen. Back then, anyway. Um, so that well, that was one, and, and it was because the hackers and generation and, and the internet was so new and all and, and all that stuff. The, the way that the, the way that they were doing with the hacking, but. Angus, no one mentions the Shermanator and the poster of the Angus like a Shermanator with the, with the underwear on his head or whatever he's doing, the girl from the Jurassic Park. Uh, th- those are the ones. I remember seeing Angus as a kid and going, uh, okay, that's, that's uh, fun. I'm also <laughs> spacing out the hackers, the, lead, the other lead actor, Angelina Jolie, was married to Yeah, him. ex-husband, yeah. What is his name Johnny again? Lee Johnny Lee Miller. Johnny Lee Miller. Yeah, yeah. yeah Sherlock. Yeah, and Sherlock. Yeah, so elementary. Yeah, big thing. But hey, guys, let us know what you think. Which of these films that are celebrating anniversaries this week? Uh, Lord of War, Just Like Heaven, Cry Wolf, and Just Like... Okay, a little mention about Just Like Heaven. Wasn't... Didn't... Um, Napoleon Dynamite actor. What's his name again? Uh, John Heater. Um, he was in that movie, I believe, and that was the movie in, in, in um, Just Like Heaven, oh, where yeah. Reese Witherspoon yeah. is. Oh, right, right. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo moves in this new apartment, and there's a ghost of a girl who used to live there, and that's right. Reese oh, Witherspoon. God. And that was the movie with John with John Heater, and that was the one to me that went like, because a lot of people were wondering, is John Heater going to be a one hit wonder with Napoleon Dynamite, or can he be a president? That was the movie to me that went. One hit wonder. Uh-huh. <laughs> Absolute uh-huh. one hit wonder. We're not going to see him around a lot. But let us know which movies stand out to you. Those ones, Hackers, Clockers, Angus. Jump in the comments section and tell us your thought, what, if you got fond memories of any of those movies. All right, folks, we're moving on to that part of the show now for Mailbag. Look, if you've got a topic or a question you'd like us to address on the show, just email us anytime at collidervideo at gmail.com. Send your questions on in, and maybe you'll see it pop up on the show here. Maybe you'll see it pop up on our Mailbag shows on Saturday and Sunday. But for now, let's see what's in there. Sinead, what do we got? Deshaun writes, hello, guys. Love the show. With the Gambit movie releasing next year, am I the only one still very, very concerned about the casting of Channing Tatum? I love the guy. I think he's hilarious hilarious and an okay actor, but I can't picture him as Gambit at all. I think that this by far will be his toughest role and I don't know if he'll be able to deliver. What do you guys think? Um, look, uh, I've said this many, many times. A couple years ago, I'm totally with you. Uh, like three, four, five years ago, totally with you. I was the biggest critic of Channing Tatum and Hall. Waste of space, waste of time, waste of air. I, I said a lot of the films that came out that he was in, I was just, this guy is horrible. But this guy has stuck with it. And if you read a little bit into his background, he also worked really damn hard to get better. This was what he wanted to be. This is what he wanted to do. He had star potential, the looks, the moves, the charisma he's got. 
And he worked, and he worked, and he worked, and gradually, about five, six years ago, you started seeing each movie he was popping up in, he was getting better, and better, and better, and better, to the point where it's like, now he's in a film, it's like, now I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Gambit is not going to be the, the most challenging role he's ever faced. No, it's not. There's a few films that he's already got in his repertoire that I think were more challenging roles. And I think now, we are going to have the best Channing Tatum that we've ever had. And I think we've been able to say that about his last two or three performances that he's turned out. That this is the best we've ever had, Channing Tatum. And I see nothing to suggest that that trajectory that he's been on is going to change. I believe that whether it's an evil Knievel or whether it's going to be in Gambit, I think we are going to get the best Channing Tatum we've ever got. The very fact that a director like Darren Aronofsky wants to find a project to work with this guy on mm -hmm. should suggest to you that there are people who know what they're talking about that look at him and think, yeah, this guy has it. You know, he's turning 35. He's no younger just a young kid. He's, he's definitely a young man, but, I mean, he's now coming into himself. I honestly think he may not have been my first choice, but the more that time passes for me personally, the more excited I'm getting about him playing the role. Um, so you are definitely not the only one who's worried about it. So don't, don't worry. You're not alone in that room. There are a lot of people who are worried about it, and this could go south real fast. But I got to say, for me personally, I'm actually starting to get some enthusiasm about this. And I'm looking forward to what he does. Shneb, what do you think? Yeah, me too. I mean, you go from 21 Jump Street to Foxcatcher, and you see the oh, you know, the so run good in the, Foxcatcher, yeah, the, yeah. that he the what he's able to bring to a role to different roles, being either just funny and goofy or dead serious, like a, in, a, in a taut thriller. So, I mean, him playing Gambit now after seeing those movies. I, I buy him as Gambit. I think, you know, 100%. I'm in for him to play this role. Even when they said he's not going to play it and there was, like, all these issues, this... I mean, to me, I'm more concerned about them spending $150 million. It's not my money. Why should I even be concerned? But I'm just <laughs> saying, like, as far as them being able to do more films, you know, what is the $150 million for? Like, hopefully it's... They're doing some stuff that we have no idea what they're doing. So they're building giant sets. It should be a lot of fun. So I don't have any worries about Channing Tatum. I don't either. And I think this goes back to the conversation we were just having with Aronofsky and everything, too, where he's constantly challenging himself, mm -hmm. whether it is a movie, if he's going to do a biopic about Evil Knievel, or if he's going to do a blockbuster comic book movie like Gambit. We know that he's a movie star. Now he's transitioning and being an actor as well, too. Because there That's are... a great way to put it. There yeah. is a difference. And he's got that movie star quality. We know that about him. And he's one of those few guys that can sell tickets, too. Um, and I like to see him getting away from the Magic Mike stuff. Because in the Magic Mike movies, he's just playing himself. He really is. He's just doing himself. We know that he can do that stuff. He gets away. He does movies like Gambit. And then he does a movie like Foxcatcher, like you said, Schnepp. And he was great in that movie. Because that, it goes back to your point, John, with the commitment, what this guy does. Yeah. He was in it. He got the the cauliflower ears. He did all, he did all of it. I mean, he was he was in it. Um, and I believe that he'll do the same with this. Because he knows right now also. He's also a really shrewd businessman. Mm -hmm. He understands yeah. that right now, the comic book genre, it's the genre. And how much people love X Men, how much people love this character. Mm -hmm. He's not just going to go in. He doesn't phone it in. We were talking about Tom Cruise the other day as a guy who doesn't phone it in. Channing Tatum doesn't phone it in. For he, good or for better or for worse, he exactly. never phones it Even in. Even right? if you don't like his performance in certain things, and I haven't too, I was very critical of him. I used to call him Chatting Chat Chat because I refused to get his <laughs> name right. Um, but he has now come to the point where I will get his name right because he deserves it. Um, and I think he's going to. I think he's going to surprise a lot of people in this one. The movie that made me go, okay, this guy can be a dramatic actor was even before Foxcatcher. It was that little film he did in 2013 called Side Effects with Rooney right. Mara, mm. Jude Law, Soderbergh. Catherine Zeta-Jones, and Soderbergh was directing him in that. And that was the movie for me that went, because I have already I already started to be turned on to him a little bit in his comedy at that point. But when I saw him in Side Effects, a movie that I did not love, but when I saw him in Side Effects, I was like, yeah, 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 he can do this. And then we see him in Foxcatcher, and his comedy kept getting bigger. It's, it's you know, you know, movie also showed his comedy chops before Twenty Two Jump Street it was that dopey Ron Howard movie with um, with Vince Vaughn. And oh yeah, we're, Kevin uh, James. Were they the best friends in the car industry? Yeah, uh, the, the, the affair, well, not the affair, but it was no, Winona Ryder. The dilemma. The dilemma. The dilemma. That was when he played like the boyfriend. Yeah, the guy, yeah. yeah, I remember that was the first. That was the first film for me in general that made me go. Channing Tatum can be good if he's in the yeah, right. The movie way. was terrible, but he was good in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I loved his cameo in This Is the End too. Oh, oh my yeah, goodness. that was yeah. <laughs> he knows <laughs> he gets comedy. Understand? Yeah. You can tell at each comedy he does, he learns yeah. because comedy is timing. 
It, yeah. It's all it is. And he has gotten the beats. He's learning the beats. The stuff he does in 22 Jump Street, that drug scene uh, when, they, when he's with the tongue and all mm-hmm. that stuff, man, he's, he's, the, he's got it. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's up and coming. Like I said, could go south real fast. But the more time passes, the, the better I feel about his casting as Gambit. So let's see where that goes. All right, last question of the day. Zachary writes, hey guys, love the show. I just recently saw the Creed trailer and I was very interested by it. Do you think that with Stallone taking back his role as Rocky in this movie that we can maybe get another Rocky movie? Thanks a lot. Um, I really can't tell you how pleasantly and beautifully surprised I was by the last Rocky film. Um, I, that was just a c- true comeback for Stallone, for the character. It was That was a movie that could have been so ridiculously silly. The 60-plus-year-old man coming out to fight the heavyweight champion of the world, and yet they made it beautiful and believable, and it wasn't like a Rocky IV, which I adore, a Rocky IV or III, just like going out slugging. It was a human, emotional, beautiful story that ended perfectly, and... What I've loved about this, especially the new Creed trailer, is that that's the Rocky we see now. It's it's the same Rocky now and further on in the progression of his life and where he is now. But I would say this. If anything to me, Rocky's presence in this Creed movie just reinforces the notion that we are done seeing Rocky movies. I I think, if anything, him now moving himself into the supporting role, basically playing Mickey now... That this kind of puts the the final stamp on it that the Rocky story is done. His story will now be a part of Adonis's story, but as far as the Rocky story, I think Stallone is telling us that story's now done. He's transitioning from the character to a character, and it looks beautiful. So me personally, no, I, I don't think I think the last Rocky movie put a final explanation point on it absolutely perfectly and uh, his appearance now this one i think just reemphasizes that Shep. i agree i think the last rocky was great and it was the last rocky we don't I mean, you shouldn't do another rocky in fact this is the rocky epitaph called creed yes mm-hmm. this is like this is where he's taken you know the master is now the apprentice is the apprentice is now the master he's playing the burgess meredith role for the new rocky yeah. who is you know, his friend's son. So if I, he says crap thunder in this uh, movie, I'm going to lose my mind. Well, I makes him go to the chickens. He's even, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was great. Yeah, yeah. He's even dressed a little bit like Burgess, the way Burgess had the hat to, like to the side uh-huh. a little bit. So there's all these little little homages to the very first Rocky, to that character that Burgess played that now he's taking the place. So I definitely don't see any more Rocky films called Rocky with Sylvester Stallone, but Sylvester Stallone is playing Rocky in this movie. This is basically what you're asking for, only it's just not called Rocky. Remember, Stallone is very aware of where the character has gone, where he is going. He, and the other thing is that Stallone had no, he wasn't going to do, Rocky wasn't coming back. That was it. Mm-hmm. Ryan Coogler came up with this idea. The director came up with this idea and pitched it to Stallone. Mm-hmm. And then Stallone was on board for it. And, that, and, and it's going to be, I hope, a trilogy of movies. And like you guys said, he will be Mickey. And he's also the same age that Burgess Meredith was, around the same, roughly around the same age, the first time wow. he ever played Mickey in, because Stallone's close to 70 years old or whatever right. it is, too. So um, it makes sense. I want to see, and from the trailer that gave away a little too much, I hope Rocky makes it out of this movie. Um, I, think, he I will. think he's going to. I think because of the fact that they teased, they already showed it to you in the trailer. Well, he goes, "If I fight, you fight." Yeah, yeah, I, yeah he's I hope. I hope, and it looks like he's at the match at the end. So you I'm, not I'm hoping. He's, yeah. But I, I, I love the idea because, and Michael B. Jordan is a great person to take over the mantle. I want to see him eventually get into those creedisms. I want to see him start talking some smack. I want to <laughs> see him doing the rhyming. I want to see eventually, not in this movie, mm-hmm. but eventually he starts, to, he's, he's got to accept that he's Creed's son and it looks like he's he's doing that gradually in this movie, but Rocky's going to help him get there. So I, I love where this story is going. I love the trailers that I've seen so much, you know, albeit maybe just a little bit too much of the story in the last one, but we're in good shape. You know what I don't think you're going to see in this movie? Because because of the fact that the I robot. don't... robot. <laughs> I know, we will no. not see the robot. I don't think you're going to see Rocky wearing any tank tops or shirtless or anything, because I, I think if they did, because I saw a recent picture of him, like from a month ago, up. working out still. Yeah. F me. Yeah. I mean... That dude, yeah. I don't know what kind of magical horse steroids this guy's on, but market that crap because yeah. he looks incredible. And then you see him in that trailer, even when he's still just doing the speed bag, that dude is smooth and mm-hmm. fluid yeah. and fast. And I think to keep the emphasis 
on Adonis, I think you're, they're going to avoid shots in Rocky of Rocky without a shirt on to right. go like, holy crap, this guy could still fight. Well, Adonis also is not a heavyweight. He's a middleweight. Right, he's a middleweight. Yeah. And might as well mention, Michael B. Jordan physically Looks has great. put himself. Like, a lot of people are talking about Jake Gyllenhaal for uh, le, uh, 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 Southpaw, Southpaw right. and how great he made himself. He, he absolutely, but Michael B. Jordan, yeah. he has really put himself well, in shape. The thing this. that excited me the most about this, not only the fact that we got to continue inside the Rocky universe, but it was the fact that Kugler and Michael B. Jordan were teaming up again. Like, I yes, love absolutely. Fruitvale Station. Very tough movie to watch again. Yeah. But those guys, collaboration, this is an actor and a director. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it almost becomes like a, a Scorsese, DiCaprio slash De Niro type thing with sure. these two eventually as Kugler. Well, if Creed works the way we hope it works, yeah. you can bet we're going to see more collaboration between those two. True. All right, folks, that'll do it for this installment of Collider Movie Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, don't forget, lots of great films playing over at our friends at AMC Theaters. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for all of your theater showtime and, of course, your movie ticket information. Once again, make sure you come back and join us tonight for a couple things. We got Jedi Council on a special Wednesday edition. It's normally Thursdays, but it's going to be on Wednesday this week, so make sure you come back for that. And our very first Empire recap show, Empire starts up again next week, but we're doing a special preseason show tonight. Make sure you come and join us for that. And most importantly, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I want to thank the guy sitting at the table with me. First of all, sitting over here, the host of Collider Heroes, which you can find online right now, yesterday's <laughs> episode, Mr. John Schnepp. Schnepp, where can people find you online? Ask, is, so this Empire thing, is that the Empire Strikes Back? Because I'm really excited about it. Is that a show about <laughs> every, week, every week. Every week. Jedi Council will flow yeah, into all Yeah, it kind of feels Empire like it's a talk. natural yeah. right into the Empire. What's going on, guys? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, at John Snap and a tdoslwh.com. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, like I said, you could always find my film, The Death Superman Lives, What Happened, by going to www.tdoslwh.com. And I'll be in Portland this weekend. You can see me and Holly. We're going to be at the Rose City Convention. So if you're in Portland, Oregon, come by and say hi. And of course, if you're on my right, the host of the aforementioned Jedi Council, Mr. Christian Harloff. Christian, where can people find you? Well, you can find me on C O L L L I D E R. You can find me, uh, every, like John said, today is going to be on Collider Jedi Council special episode today. It's going to be myself. John, Mark Ellis, and John Schnepp. It's a, it's a big council today. Make sure that you guys check that out and hashtag Collider Jedi Council. Get your questions on the air, hopefully. And follow me, please, at Twitter and Instagram at Christian Harloff. And, of course, our lovely host today, Ms. Sinead DeFries. Sinead, where can people find you? I'm online on Twitter and Instagram at Sinead DeFries and at that's so Sinead.com. And uh, you guys can find my new novel called The Pride coming out here in a couple of months. Head on over to kickstarter.com and just search for The Pride and you will find how you can back the book as well as well as reserve your advanced copy. Other than that, you can follow me on Twitter and on Facebook simply at John Campia. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. My name is John Campia for Collider Video and until next time, bye-bye.